What's wrong with your eye? I don't, I don't know. Oh, I'm going to check down. Hold on. Yeah, just get that uh, looked at because your eye is like falling. Oh, goodness. It's, ooh, we here at the, we here at the puppet shop. Look, at look, it just got worse. I, I don't feel so good. Ow. I'm sorry, honey. The puppeteers here are not very talented. They're not very talented. You know, one of them's holding me right now. I, I know, honey. They, they obviously can't hear or see because they could do better. They could... What, what is this? Are you threatening me? Are you threatening me? Are you saying your non-existent eyes are watching me? Is that what you're saying? You are literally Peter robbing Paul. I don't, I don't really get this. Not really. In the general sense. I mean, I mean, sure, I get it. It's some kind of breakdown. It's some kind of mental stress. It's something between, um, you know, <laughs> self, <laughs> self check-in at the local facility. Hey, it's, it's kind of like that. I mean, that's where we are. Hey, by the way, uh, did you want to talk about, uh, urban slang? No, I, who was talking about urban slang? I was talking about urban slang. No, you, no one was talking about urban slang. No, I was thinking about words. Just, just grab a rap snake and, and, and give me a moment. All right, I'll give you a moment. Hashtag rap snakes. Yeah, hashtag rap snakes. So I was thinking about um, urban slang or not. Urban slang? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it's not urban necessarily. I mean, I guess... I guess it comes from urban areas when you think about it, because cities are more interactions of people. You know, if you get out to rural or suburban areas, uh, you get less people, less interaction. So I, I think to get greater interaction, to get a more vernacular, colloquial, um, no. I mean, it's a language within a language, isn't it? I mean, and you get it because all these people interact in the city and nobody's got time and people, are, you know, it's not like, oh, I'd like some macaroni and cheese. No, I want mac and cheese. Give me some mac. Mac. I mean, mac. The fact that somebody says mac and you understand it is both macaroni and cheese and not your friend mac. I mean, that that's slang. That's an urban slang. That doesn't come from the country. You ever been out to the country? The country, they'd be like, yo, you want some macaroni and some of this here cheese? Are you saying people from the country are slow? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying when you're in the country, you've got a time, you've got a pace. You know, it's a country pace. Everybody, every, you ever heard a country song that's fast and angry? Yeah, I've heard all kinds of angry. No, you haven't heard a country song that's fast and angry. You've heard country songs that are angry. You've heard downright dark songs. Johnny Cash, I mean, sang about some stuff. He sang about murder. Murder? Murder. You haven't really thought about that word in that accent, have you? No, I really haven't. Murder. 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 No, that's, that's the wrong accent altogether. I, I can't do it. I don't... Murder. Like, how do people in... How do people where I'm from... How do sharks from the great... Where are you from again? We haven't really established that. But I'm definitely a shark. Yeah, sure. Okay, you're a shark. And therefore, I have no home. But maybe I was raised... Out back. <laughs> really? You you know the outback is on land, right? I'm a land shark. No, you're, you're definitely not land. <laughs> what, what, I, I need, I, I'm weak with laughter. I need some rap snacks. Just... Yeah, but keep keep going with your with what you were you were saying something about mer y you know I've got no idea what I was talking about now. You've completely derailed that conversation. So I was thinking about words and I like words and then I was thinking about Oh, I was thinking about transhumanism. What what's transhumanism? Is that transgenderism? Well, I mean maybe. 
Now, I don't think they're exclusive, uh, but transgenderism is specifically transhumanism as it relates to genitals, I believe. I mean, I, I really don't know. This is all like brand new words and terminology. Oh, because I was thinking about Urban Dictionary. Oh, wait a minute. You, you brought up... You brought up... All of this for Urban Dictionary. Yeah, because my name is Ellsworth. Okay. And, and Ellsworth is apparently the amount of time it takes to smoke an L, which is a blunt. Eh, it's a marijuana reference. A marijuana reference. You wouldn't think. You wouldn't think. Not on a puppet show. Not on a puppet show, Tally. Style vlog. You wouldn't you wouldn't think that Ellsworth was a reference to marijuana. Huh. You you know what the real kicker is, right? Oh yeah, I know what the real kicker is. You wanna say it? Oh, I totally wanna say it. Ellsworth is the name that your mom gave you. Yeah. So that raises some questions about mom. Oh, no, no, no. It gets deeper than that. Oh, yeah. It's like Inception style. Because mom named me. Yeah, mom named you after her dad. Right. And that means her dad's parents. What's that over there? <laughs> it's not really an L though, is it? No, I guess it's the sound a bong would make. Well, we just we just left the world of children's entertainment, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we were never in the world of children's entertainment. I think your cousin just turns off the sound and lets all the fancy colours entertain the child. And then the child can be all like, these puppets are saying nice things. And they're not talking about a dark world filled with humans and horrors. So, aside from terrifying children, I think you were saying something about transhumanism. Oh yeah, transhumanism. Because I think about this a lot. I, I follow this lady on Instagram, her... She's X X O P O N P O N. I'm never going to spell it right, and I'm going to have to dig around to find it. But anyway, she's this um, an athlete, I believe, an athlete in the Paralympics because she has only one leg. All right, so she's got only one leg, and she's got a prosthetic, but she's got like a bionic leg, a bionic leg. Right, a bionic leg, and I was thinking, well, my goodness, you know. What's to prevent me from getting a bionic leg? But you have both of your legs. Yeah, but say I want two more. Yeah, but you're... What are you doing? I'm just saying that, you know, transhumanism in, encapsulates this whole possibility where we can look at our bodies the way we were born and we were going, well, maybe I want to try different traits. What do you mean different traits? Well, you know, like genomes. You understand genomes, don't you? Well, I mean, I kind of understand genomes, but do tell, I'm sure. No, no, you understand genomes. You understand, like, dominant and recessive traits, don't you? Of course, I, I mean, I understand genomes. I mean, I took the... You remember the fruit flies back in college? They were like the blue fruit flies, or the fruit flies with red eyes, and the fruit flies with black eyes, and then the ones with black wings with red eyes and anyway you would keep breeding them and breeding them and breeding them and then you would get like their kids would have dominant traits like brown eyes and then they would have recessive traits like blue eyes and you would have to have a perfect pairing of recessive traits in order to get blue eyes and then if you had two dominant traits you would get let's say brown eyes i'm not saying that brown is dominant over blue but i actually think brown is dominant over blue but anyway the thing is is that even though you might have brown eyes, you might have a recessive trait for blue eyes that you pass on to your child. That means you have a blue eyes thing inside of you all the time. Oh yeah, you've got half a blue eyes. And imagine if maybe you lived your whole life with blue eyes and you're like, well, maybe I just want to have brown eyes today. 
And then maybe there's technology where you go into your your genome, your your genetic doctor. I don't know what you'd call it. Your your uh, CRISPR doctor. CRISPR, I think, was the name of the technology they came up with for gene splicing. Anyway, I mean, you're talking about a molecular level and people are all like, oh, you know, I'm so upset about you changing your genitals. I, I know, it's like, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't think puppets should really get into this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because then it becomes, you know, I mean, first of all, we don't have any genitals. There's nothing down there. I mean, I, I present as kind of a, a, a male character, I suppose. But I, I truly have no genitals. Yeah, no, I, I don't have any genitals either, and I kind of present like a female character. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, you know. But you don't have any genitals. I mean, you don't have any arms. Well, I'm a snake. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, and you're a shark. Yeah, but I'm not in water. I mean, if I was in the water, I mean, I could be sh a shark. And, you know, sharks can't talk. No, and, and snakes can't talk. Yeah, so the whole thing's a suspension of disbelief. Yeah, so this doesn't really matter. No, it's just a, new, a thought experiment, really. You you know, if, if you don't even set up the fourth wall, then I guess there's nothing to tear down, is there? No, there's, there's really not. I mean, not when you think about it. Look, all, all I'm saying is when I grow up, I saw the movie Robocop. And when I saw the movie Robocop, and here is a man broken and destroyed, and there were just pieces left of him, and then these crazy scientists came along and they're like, we can make him better. I mean, come on, I was raised on the six million dollar man and the bionic woman. I was raised on things like Robocop, and, and, and like I snuck in some of that Japanese animation, the manga, well, more the anime. Anyway, the Japanimation. But it always toys with the idea of, like, technology and humanity blended. Star Trek talked about the Borg, where the synthetic and the natural was perfectly blended. I mean, look, look at... I wear glasses, for crying out loud. You do not wear glasses. Well, I mean, the quadrupus wears glasses, for I mean, what? Is she gonna... Is she gonna argue with me on everything? Yes, I, I mean, what... Why am I here unless I'm gonna argue? She's going to argue with me on everything. I mean, honestly, could I get a coffee or something? I'm, I'm kind of parched. I'm, he's going to, he's really going to leave in the middle of this. This is, <sighs> okay. So I guess what he was saying is that, like, I mean, transgenderism is just one phase, one element. I'm not diminishing or understating it. I think it is a struggle and I'm, I'm humbled by people who take that journey, you know, and, and a lot of the people I know who are very progressive and liberal thinkers are all like, I don't understand about this. <laughs> it's not that they're British, but I think raised in America, you kind of have that thought that <laughs> any kind of backward thinking is British because this is where you came from, the colonies, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> so that's, that's not necessarily true, though. I've met some very progressive British people. I mean, I, I couldn't name anyone right off the top. Oh, come on. Is that Oliver guy? John Oliver? I mean, we could bring him up, I guess. John Oliver is okay. He's got that thing for coronavirus right now. I mean, it's not like he's got the coronavirus. He's just doing a thing talking about, you know, fact from fiction and all that stuff. And yeah, so... So I guess round and round and round to the point I was getting at is transhumanism is, I think, a natural progression of technology. You know, people are all bent about like, well, you know, what do you mean you want to change part of your body? I mean, when you think about it, people are all bent about your genitals being changed, but they think nothing about taking a dead person's heart and putting it in their own chest. I mean, you're scavenging the dead to live. And you're getting hung up on, oh, you want to do something different with your genitals. Oh, you want to do something different with your no-no bits. I mean, come on. If I had the option, I'd remove my genitals and replace it with a laser beam. Every time I go to the bathroom, I make the noise anyway. Pew, 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 pew. You have no idea how amazing it feels. 
you just go pew, 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 pew. I mean, I would literally have a laser beam put in, like put in. Like when I drop trowel, you better run because I'm going to level the playing field. I mean, that's what I would do. This is why technology maybe shouldn't be put in your hands. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm saying people wear glasses. They have insulin pumps. This lady's got an artificial bionic leg. In a hundred years, you'll be able to go into a place and go, you know what? Make me six inches taller. Why? Because I don't feel like reaching for the cereal on top of my fridge anymore. And then I'll go in, like, the same day, and I'll be like, could I have the, uh, the cake that makes you small? Well, why is that? Well, because I'm tired of buying big clothes, okay? Like, adult clothes are expensive, and if I were only, like, half my size, I could shop at the Baby Gap. Do you really want to shop at the Baby Gap? I mean, they're just like adult clothes anyway. It's mostly trending stuff. And slightly inappropriate. I mean, I don't mean to sound conservative. We're all a little conservative, trust me. If you woke up in the same place you went to sleep last night, you're rather conservative. And if you're going to go right back to the same place tonight, conservative thinking. <laughs> yeah. And if you were truly liberal, you wouldn't stop. You'd keep moving. No man's a liberal. <laughs> and farmers are conservative? Where, where are we going with this? I, I don't think we're going anywhere. I think we've branched on a lot of topics we ought not have been touching on. Yeah, we should just get back to the karaoke. Yeah, the karaoke and the... Uh, and the other strange parts of things. Yeah. Yeah. So all this over a word. Yeah, over of a word. Because Ellsworth is the time, apparently, it takes to finish a blunt. Hmm. Huh. Can I tell a story? Yeah, you want to tell it? Yeah. Um. So the reason I bring up Ellsworth is that a friend of mine... Um... We'll call her B. She, uh, well, she passed away not too long ago. And, um, every time I drive past her old house, I, I get that feeling like, I'm kind of mad at her. And I know that's weird, but I'm really mad at her because I thought she she had more time. Like, she had a lot more time. And she decided to just push and push and gamble and risk and gamble and push and risk until she... I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I, I know. Oh, no. I'm... I've known a lot of people like that. I'm, they're just not, they're just not happy, you know. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've I've been there. I, I've been in a, a dark place before where you don't want to. You don't want to do anything. <laughs> so I got this song. It, it, I was running through the old slips. It's like the song I sing. This is the song I sing. When I don't want to think about it. Anything, because all of the voices inside me are screaming. All of the voices inside me are screaming. All of the. You wouldn't think that a puppeteer would have inner voices. You wouldn't think that. No, that's a real shock, isn't it? Yeah, you you know you wouldn't think that someone who plays with puppets would have inner monologues. Oh no, it's not bad if the inner monologues. It's it's bad when the <laughs> inner party lines. Oh hello, calling in. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I'm calling in too. Calling in the hotline. Got lots of ideas. None of them good. But yeah, I've been there, you know. I've been there when I I, I get mad. You know, I, I don't get sad at first. I get mad. I get mad. I just look around and I'm like, oh, oh no, none of this. None of this works anymore. None. Nope. Nope, shut it down. Shut the whole machine down. Grab that lever, pull that piston, turn that knob, shut it down. I'm not doing this. 
I'm not doing this. I'm done. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Shut it down. I'm done. And then somebody goes, nope, we're going to keep moving the machine. I'm like, go ahead and try. Go ahead and touch the knob. Go ahead and put that from park into drive. I dare you. I'm going to need a fiver. Yeah, so what he was talking about is that sometimes uh, the anger, you know, really sets in and it's just like, <gasps> fist face. Oh, I hate fist face. Yeah, I know. I don't like fist face either, but it comes and it's useful sometimes. But then once the anger burns for a day or two, then it's into the, oh, Oh, I, I guess the machine's just going to keep running, isn't it? Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. No, that's fine. I'll, I'll keep rowing. That's fine. Row. <laughs> Row. <laughs> Row your boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the down <laughs> the stream. This is the worst puppet show ever. No, I mean, it might be the best puppet show ever. No, no, I... I'm pretty sure it's the worst one ever. No, I'm pretty sure it's the best. Wait a second. That's right. It's not the worst puppet show ever, and it's not the best puppet show ever. It's right. It's neither. It's just a waste of your time. Yeah, it's just a waste of your time. Wow, you're a positive person, aren't you? Not today. I can't be positive every day. That's why we make one every day, so you can go... Well, that one was sucked. I'm going to go back and watch another. Yeah, you could totally do that. We want to thank you for tuning in to those two days ago. Thank you for tuning in. It's so fantastic. Thank you for tuning in. Because if you didn't tune in. I said if you didn't tune in. I said if you didn't tune in. Well, we'd be lonely. Yeah, we'd be very lonely. <laughs>